it's very, very important for the consortium board to really appreciate uh, what the centers are, uh, get a first-hand feel for the uh, work that's going on, get a little bit of a chance to interact with the scientists, uh, uh, so that the board, you know, has a um, sort of a personal identification with the uh, with the centers that, that make up the system, with the people who make up the system, and also get a little bit of a flavor of the, the constraints we face. And on the operational side, uh, we have uh, changed the way that the centers are doing research by shifting from a center focus to a CRP focus, uh, progress focus. Um, and, uh, and, we, and we have been able uh, to see in the last few years a num the adoption by farmers of a number of very success stories coming from the research outcomes, such as the, the rice, uh, the flood intolerant variety, the school of rice. Uh, the maize and beans and uh, and uh, cassava drought varieties, uh, biofortification, uh, and uh, and I think that this all goes well for the for the health of, of, of the system, um, and uh, and uh, and we we continue to to work on these success stories. Yes, this is a very positive time uh, to be in the CGIR, both because of the importance of the mission and because of the confidence of our investors uh, in, in the new CGIR. And I think uh, certainly from the perspective of, of rice research, the uh, transformation of the system has allowed us to realize a dream that many of us had, well, I personally had, since the um, uh, late 1980s. And that is develop a global rice uh, community, research community that uh, developed a global agenda to address problems of, of global importance as well as, as, as local importance. And I think that the centers and ourselves, we have to continue to advocate uh, in front of the international community that uh, agricultural research for development is part of the solution to food security, to poverty <coughs> elevation, to sustainable development. And, and we have been able to do so, but, uh, but uh, there are many sources of demands for finance, and I think that we should, we should uh, this advocacy work is very, very important. The, um, the move towards uh, accountability uh, for our work, uh, I think, is, 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 is great, and I think it's a, a big step in the right direction. Uh, you mentioned quality control. I couldn't agree more. I think we need to make sure that the CGIR is the place for excellence in research sharply targeted towards development outcomes. The consortium board asked uh, the consortium office to first develop a CGIR-wide gender strategy. And subsequently, we asked the CRPs to come up with their strategy to make sure that gender research, research that ensures that both men and women have equal access or fair access to the new technologies that we uh, develop, that the technologies we develop aren't favoring men, that we develop technologies that are suitable for female head of households, for women working in agriculture whole slew of things, that we do this appropriately. Because, of course, agriculture is still very much a male-dominated business. Now we're making good progress on that. Uh, we're hiring probably more gender researchers than ever before. Uh, some of our programs are really strong. Um, gender in agriculture is enormous. Mm. Women in agriculture is enormous. Certainly in rice, we see what's called the feminization of agriculture is you have out-migration of men from the rural areas. Women are becoming uh, more and more managers of the overall uh, farming sector in, in many parts of the uh, developing world, certainly in rice-based economies. When we look at the uh, situation of women in rice mm -hmm. cultivation, rice cultivation could be among the worst jobs in the world mm -hmm. in terms of Trans preparing the land, transplanting yes. rice, weeding in the mud up to your knees is very, very 
picturesque, it's, but backbreaking. It is backbreaking. Yes. And uh, women are the women, are the people who typically do the transplanting, who typically do the hand weeding, yeah. who typically uh, are, are uh, engaged in the harvesting. All of these are very, very difficult That's operations. Yeah. Not only difficult, they're time consuming. I think using human capital for that is the worst use of human capital. So I think anything we can do that can free up people from this burden that falls disproportionately on women is probably among the most effective gender uh, approaches that we could have. I think our basic philosophy is still very much the same. We get money from the taxpayer, we put our results out for everybody to use. But how we have to do that, the tools we use for that, have changed a bit. So we have come up with intellectual asset principles. <coughs> we still say, in principle, everything we produce is in the public domain, but we recognize that in some cases we may have to collaborate with the private sector. And in some cases it may be necessary to either have licenses from the private sector that allow us to use some of their intellectual assets, or in some cases, the best way to get our knowledge to farmers is indeed through seed companies. And we may need to have some arrangements, some licensing for specific conditions. And our intellectual asset principles basically say, if the centers can justify that to have higher impact for the poor, we can do a licensing deal, then it is justified. Now, it's a bit similar with open access. Now we are saying, yes, our stuff should be in the public domain, but how do people actually use it? And the modern approach to that is to say, we take our data, we make sure that they have the right metadata, we make sure that they are machine readable and that they sit there in repositories so that people can grab them and use them. So on our side, I think it's a commitment to say, not just everybody can use it, but that actually everybody has easy access to it that they can actually use our data in a, in a way that makes sense. If we want to, to give away, as it were, what we produce, and we expect a, uh, someone else to take it up and use it, there has to be a clear ability for us to say, okay, this is ours, we want you to use it, if you use it, these are the terms. So that changing uh, landscape of public-private sector interaction uh, it has major implications for how we manage our intellectual assets, uh, how we protect, uh, and you know, giving something away for free, you can do it if you own it. If you don't, you, you can't say, oh, that's a very nice piece of technology that he owns, you can have it. So, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it, and I find this actually intellectually very stimulating as well as uh, personally satisfying. To see. capacity to have uh, engaging uh, conversations about critical issues. Uh, not everybody agrees on everything. It should be very clear that, from my perspective at least, that we share a very solid common uh, platform of, of departure. We also share a common vision of where we want to end up and nuts and bolts of how we get there. So. Yes, we definitely share uh, love for robust conversations, uh, Bob, well, as uh, I think people who know us know, and uh, I think that's necessary to move us forward. So. Yeah, I would say that uh, all institutional reforms are, are difficult, but I think, and that's, there's no exception to that, but I think that during the course of the last three years we have been building trust and confidence, and I think that now we are looking at common objectives and working together. Uh, to Warsaw, which, uh, which I think is a significant change from, uh, from the first days in which things, there were tensions and uncertainties and, 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 and a number of things. So I'm, I'm, I'm very glad. We're not there yet, but I think we're moving in the right direction.